Welcome back to another episode of the Who You Know Show podcast, where what you know is important, but who you know can make all the difference in your business, career, relationships, and life. My name is Trevor Houston, and on this show, you'll learn the strategy, grit, and mindset it takes to overcome obstacles so you can level up in your career, recover your cash flow, and live the life of purpose that God intended for you. Don't forget to look at the mic drop moments time stamped in the show notes below. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure to pay it forward, subscribe and leave an honest review so we can improve. Thanks for listening. My name is Trevor Houston, and please enjoy this episode of the Who You Know Show. So we got Dom Westmoreland in the house, HR consultant, speaker, life coach, podcaster, and author. Don empowers the workforce to be more productive and engaged. Hey, Don, I appreciate you uh, coming to spend some time with us. Tell us about your backstory, how you got into radio. How did I get into radio? First of all, hello, everyone. This is exciting to talk to you. I'm in North Florida instead of Asheville, North Carolina. We'll take it back about seven years. Seven years ago, I was working for a federal agency and I became a whistleblower, which means I spoke up about illegal hiring practices. And then I received a lot of retaliation. Oh, wow. Fast forward a year later after losing my home, spending a few days in the mental health ward recovering from exhaustion. That launched the idea that everybody should have a safe and respectful work environment. So back in um, 2013, I settled with the federal agency and I refused to sign a non-disclosure agreement so I, I could help other people, employees, employers to have safe and respectful work environments. So that's the short story, guys. Wow. Wow. So your avoidance created something for you, huh? Yeah. I would call myself a disruptor. That whistleblower. I'm like, I remember snitches get stitches. And you <laughs> paid for some of that. You did. Yeah. I lost my house. I lost 90% of my possessions. Oh, and yeah. uh, before it took about a year of me holding my bullies accountable. And then I had a success. And that's when people started reaching out and they asked me how I did it. Well, it did help to have an HR background. I am retired from the Air Force 20 years, and I grew up with seven Aaron brothers, Rowan. so I have to say everything adds up. To yeah, help. it does. It does. Yeah, I'm a, I'm an Air Force vet, too. Oh, wow. Well, thank you yeah. for serving. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, my whole service. career wasn't supposed to happen. I don't know how in the world I ended up doing what I'm doing. And then Trevor created this job father, and I like that. <laughs> That's the first thing I've seen along the way. That, I didn't that, create it, though. I didn't well, create it. He didn't create it, uh, but he I, came I just, up with the idea to... To market that. Yeah, I market So I give him the credit because I wasn't thinking about it. Somebody that. said it on one of our shows. I can't Somebody remember who it was. It, yeah. They called you the job father, and I said, bing, bing, that's it. That is you. So, Don, real quick. So you specialize in respectful and safe workplaces. What is an industry, I'm curious, that you might steer clear of that might just be on the, like, maybe you'd snitch on them? <laughs> I'd snitch on anybody that wow. mistreated people wow. in the workplace. Yeah, yeah. there well, you go. Good for you. I'm, I'm it's a really good question. And I've done a lot of interviews on radio, podcast, TV, and nobody's ever asked me that question. I don't think that I would stare where, steer away from any industry. There are some that seem more prominent, like, you know, I hear it all the time with teaching and nursing and such. But no, I would not stare. I wouldn't steer away from any one of them. Yeah. What I would do is empower myself, learn everything I could and stand up for myself and stand up for others if possible. But is there an industry though that might be, mm, need some work? Let's put it that way. Maybe, maybe oh. there's a <laughs> place that, that you, you're a job seeker and you know, like, you know, you're wanting to go back to work and maybe this is a place that <laughs> you're like, mm, little edgy not there. and maybe gets a lot of complaints, a lot of harassment, a lot of that kind of stuff. Anything that you can think of off the top of your head? From my experience, I worked five years in the federal government as a civilian. And of course, I spent 20 years in the Air Force. To me, one of the toughest challenges is working in the federal agency because a lot of times things are swept under the rug. But I can't sit there and say that's a blanket all for all federal agencies. If you were to file, for example, discrimination charges with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, you might end up getting a settlement, a remedy, but rarely do the people that have been bullying you or discriminating against you, do they get held, do they get held responsible? And let me back up a second and say that bullying is not illegal, but discrimination 
in the workplace that's protected class, according to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, that's a whole different story. So what's that line? Because bullying could be a form of discrimination when I'm thinking about it. From, yes. You know what I mean? So where's that line where you cross over from a, being a bully to just hating on people? Quit your hating. It's a good question. And it's definitely a fair question. I, I would gear everybody because I'm an HR person. I'm not an attorney or employment attorney. I would have anybody, especially in the United States, go to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission website, EOC, and it spells it out. Just put in discrimination and it'll bring out the different categories of discrimination. So if it falls within that area, age discrimination, disability, LGBTQ, disability discrimination, and there's more, sexual harassment, and I think I covered age. Those would be the discrimination. And you're right. Bullying often feels like discrimination or vice versa, but there's definitely a definitive. You could also talk to an employment attorney and you could find out to find out if it's bullying. Is it covered? Because I know out in California, there's some new laws that just passed about bullying and harassment. Across the nation, they've been trying, a lot of people in position of power authority have been trying to make it illegal to bully in the workplace. And that's still ongoing. My question, Don, <laughs> is... When you're facing some adversity like that, it's bullying or discrimination. Maybe you're for our job seekers in the audience, like you're running into ageism or sexism or some other type of discrimination. And it's it's pretty apparent, right? You can identify mm -hmm. that clearly. How would you suggest people turn that around or should they just walk away? Should they just say, hey, this is not, definitely not an environment I want to be in. It's better I saw this right now. What would you recommend? Is this before they get hired or while they are working at a company? Be before they get hired even, right? Like maybe even in the interview process. Okay. If it was me and I was looking for a job, I would do a lot of research on the company as much as possible. If there was even the opportunity to go into the company, in some cases there are, and just watch and as Take a look at how the people are acting. Uh -huh. That's a big thing. If you can go in and just be discreet, see how they're acting. Are they happy? Are they engaged? Do they look like they're psychologically safe? Because even a well-paying job and the job of your dreams will absolutely go downhill if you have a bully boss, bully coworkers. And truly, sometimes you don't know until you get into the workplace what's going to happen. That's so true. Have you ever worked in or worked with the auto industry before in that space? No, I have not. I've worked with a lot of um, federal, federal employees and such and, you know, in different career fields and such, but not auto. Yeah, it can be a lot. That's why I was trying to find out from you earlier about some of these different industries because I came from the auto industry and it, it gets a little bit of a bad rap. Just it can be a little, a little ha mm -hmm. harsh and a little, uh, little bit of a grind. And I think it's changed a lot, though, because of the Internet has changed a lot of it. And so, you know, there used to be a lot of negotiation and a lot of the negotiation. Yeah, a lot has of that's been, been taken away. Had it's it. been taken away. Yeah. And so it's a lot of the it's more just like true car pricing that's out there. So that has removed a lot of this, some of the craziness that goes on behind the scenes, back and forth with the sales manager and all that stuff, which creates a lot of animosity. Yeah, it, it does. really does. And so uh, I, I, was, I was just curious if you'd ever worked in that industry or heard anything about it before, because it still needs a lot of work. Were you thinking about that industry when you were asking those questions? Yeah, about there? bullies and all this kind of I Look, I worked in the auto industry for six years and yeah, I straight up got cussed out all the time. Wow. And I mean, it is very, it's toxic. It can be very toxic. Yeah, yeah. it can yeah. be very toxic. Depending on mm -hmm. where you go and depending on the, it, again, the leadership, like she said, you may have, it could be the best experience for you know, it's about people. Yep. At the end of the day, we're dealing with people. Yep. But it just mm -hmm. so happens that a lot of the old school car guys, they come from an old school world where it was a gr it was a grind, a lot of negotiation, this hustle mentality, this, and they talk to people crazy. In the new world, it's a little different. No, n no more negotiation. And so it's it is shifting, but it's still taking a while. It just depends on where you go. I really feel that way, Don. We have a lot of senior leaders and career search network attendees and viewers right now. So they're in upper level management or executive roles. What would you tell them? Like, how do they keep 
an eye out for that because it's sometimes it's subversive, right? And it's maybe not viewable at that level. So a leader that's trying to look out for his or her employees, you're asking yes, me? Yes, absolutely. Because as a leader, when you go into a company, you're, right. you're just taking on some things that you don't know about that existed before you got there. Okay, fair game. Okay, one of the things that the leaders have to have is strategies. They need to also understand what's bullying, what's discrimination. They have to have training. When there is a problem that arises, a workplace issue that arises that is bullying or discrimination, it needs to be addressed immediately. It absolutely needs to be documented. I worked in employee labor relations for years, and I know how important documentation is. And I can honestly say the reason why I was able to refuse to sign my non-disclosure agreement was because I did a really thorough job with documentation. Witnesses sometimes get scared. They are afraid of retaliation. They're not always reliable. So you can have a mission statement that you have a safe, respectful work environment, but you have to walk the talk. So you have to do continuous training. There was a task force. I think it's been almost three years now with the EEOC, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And they found out very quickly that online training about bullying or discrimination is not as effective as one-on-one, meaning somebody comes in and does the training and consulting. So when somebody sees, leaders sees that there's a problem in the workplace, there's dissension, non-engagement, there's people, employees missing a lot of work, then there's an issue and they have to get down to the bottom of it. They might have to bring in consultants. They may need to bring in people who are trained to mitigate the risk because they also possibly face litigation. Anybody can file charges against them. And uh, let's talk about today with social media, you can put information out there all the time that you're having a hard time in your job and nobody wants that negative publicity yeah yeah thanks for listening to the who you know show podcast my name is trevor houston and if you've enjoyed this episode consider subscribing wherever you listen and leave us a positive review to help us keep the mics on in the studio until next week that's the show it's all about who you know who you know